That was a Munchak we had to work very hard for. This week, we've got Kayak Bryn up a mountain in Norway, there's duck, quail, deer, goats and foxes in hunting YouTube, and in news, the Antis are trying to lure foxhounds onto roads to get run over. Lovely people. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. Newton's third law of row stalking. For every buck you see at the start of the buck season, there's an equal and opposite doe you will see at the end of the season. And that's about now. If you are out after bucks, you'll need to be lucky. Paul Childerly believes he is lucky. Tonight's the night. Come on. Shut the doors. Get on with it. We are stalking a small <laughs> private estate in Gloucestershire. It is stuffed with deer. Honestly, look at any film we have made with Paul over the last six years and you will see buck after buck. But today, you're not going to believe this, they are all, and I mean all, does. So much so that the outing runs into days. We see dozens and dozens of row, but all does, most with kids afoot. Happily, there are muntjac here. We just spotted a, a muntjac in his plantation and uh, don't particularly want them here because uh, uh, it's just not welcome because he's got a lot of young shrubs and a lot of uh, young trees and the landowner dislikes them big time. So uh, I'm just going to see if we can get it. It looks like a, a small buck, but I'll have a better look when we get down there. If it's not already gone. It does what its species is famous for. Normal munchak. Disappear. We get close to more deer, but this time it's pheasants working against us. Yeah. The buck and the doe have split up. The buck's gone back into this, this block we just come from. It's actually quite a good one to shoot because he's a malform. So I don't think I like keeping malforms, but uh, he might well come out, even though he's spooked now, we've got another hour or so, so he might come back onto his... We stalk on, but as usual, we go home to the sound of farm machinery working into the night. Paul and his clients shoot plenty of deer between our outings, but never when we have a camera anywhere near him. What day is it today? Oh yes. So, what's the plan, Paul? Okay, right, plan of action. Um, we're going to... Wind's coming in from the east. And we're right in the heart of the wood at the moment, so what we're going to do is we get down this track here, push right round to the far side of the, the block of woodland, and then come back up. And this is where the story gets amazing, because it actually goes according to Paul's plan. Plan went to plan. There was a muntjac down on the left hand side. As you said. Yeah, he's actually on the right hand side. I lied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice little buck actually. So yeah, perfect. You didn't have long to have a look. How do you, how do you know what he's like that, that quickly? I don't know. I suppose just years of just seeing them, I suppose. Obviously, see them every day um, back in Bedfordshire. So you just, yeah, estimate. I, I don't know how cracking, uh, how good he is, but I'd say he's, you know, see why it's that much. He's not a medal, but he's a little rep, so be good. With a deer on the deck, all previous stalking outings are forgiven. You are probably thinking, I don't want to go stalking with Paul, but you should. Say this for him, he won't give up. Visit childerlysporting.co.uk Well done, Paul. That was extremely hard work. Now, if only he'd returned a better man, but he didn't. It's David with the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. Hunt saboteurs are stepping up their campaign to kill foxhounds. The Ross Harriers lost a hound at the weekend, lured onto a busy road where it was hit by a lorry. This video by East Essex huntsman Gary Thorpe shot at the weekend shows hunt saboteurs on private land using horns and a new device bought with funds provided by the high street chain Lush. It plays an amplified recording of hounds in cry to lure the hounds away. 
Walter Palmer was hunting legally. The dentist from Minnesota who received death threats from celebrities, including British chat show host Piers Morgan, was, it turns out, doing nothing wrong when he killed the lion nobody had ever heard of called Cecil. The Zimbabwe government says Palmer's permits were in order. An Australian man who got lost on a hunting trip survived by eating ants. 62-year-old Reg Fogarty left a car driven by his brother in pursuit of a camel he was hunting in the Great Victoria Desert in Western Australia State, but didn't return. His brother alerted authorities and eventually police trackers found him nine miles from where he disappeared. Botswana is beginning to regret its hunting ban. A feature article in the New York Times says that lions and elephants are raiding villages in rural Botswana. Since Botswana banned trophy hunting two years ago, remote communities have been at the mercy of growing numbers of wild animals that are hurting livelihoods and driving terrified villagers into their homes at dusk. The hunting ban means a drop in income and locals are learning to hate animals again, leading to more wildlife poaching and poisoning incidents. And finally, the Antis have done something that British game farmers approve of. Threats by Antis have made Brittany Ferries ban the carriage of day-old pheasant chicks from France to the UK. Many British shoots buy their pheasants in France because they're cheaper. Shooting organisations have asked the ferry company to review its decision. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Looking lean, tanned and fit, I notice. Now, Kaya Bryn should be looking all of those things because he has been hunting reindeer in Norway. This week, how to get the animal off the hill. The ambush may have been perfect. British deer stalker and game chef Kai Ab Bryn is in Norway on a reindeer hunt. You can watch what happens on YouTube. But once the big bull is down, the hunting party is faced with moving several hundred pounds of meat down the mountain. What do they do next? First of all, you have to get the paperwork straight. When you, when you, shoot, a, when you shoot a reindeer up in the mountains, you have to uh, fill out one of these. Can I have a look at that? Different license for different... Yeah. For the, for the bucks, for the simla, which are the females, and the calves. So now the next stage with this beast is um, Inga and Ulla Biom are going to come and do a preparation in the mountains of how to, uh, to, to, to skin it, take the meat off, put it in the backpacks, ready to go back down. Now Inga and Ulla Biom are really experienced reindeer hunters, so I'm, I'm going to be learning something here and taking on board some of their experience. They have already done the green gralic and there is a good reason they don't keep the liver or kidneys. The things that these uh, reindeer eat have absorbed radiation from Chernobyl directly through the, through the wind. When it happened in the 80s, the wind brought over radiation cloud over Norway, contaminated a lot of the soil and even now there's some traces that they find in, in the offal. The rest of the beast is okay, it's fine, but you're saying in the, the kidneys and the liver it's to be safe to, to not eat it. First, they remove the head, then it's into the diaphragm to remove the heart and lungs. You're taking away the, uh, the windpipe, the esophagus. Yes. We have the heart. I'm going to cut the heart out. And that will make good eating as well. So, yep. so as you can see, Inga's cleaned the cavity and it looks pretty clean to me. The sponge has made good work of mopping up some of the blood that was inside. And it's trimmed inside, taking out the, uh, the tubes, the anus and the penis and all the inside, so we, are, we are now have an empty cavity. So they start skinning it on one side first. And once they've skinned one side fully, they can then take out the shoulder, the back haunch, the saddle. Well, not the saddle yet, they're gonna keep the saddle intact. And then they, they can roll it over. So they skin the other side, so the beast is not actually touching, touching the snow or the ground. So what we've been doing here is stretching out the hide, leaving the bottom of the, the bone from the, from the foot, slightly twisting it, putting it down, getting a stone. Pack it in the snow. And that, we'll do the same in the last one there, and that's a hygienic area to work, work in. We're working inside the hide, inside the hide of the reindeer so it's not touching the ground and cross-contaminating. We've skinned, we've skinned the reindeer 
we stretched it out. Um, so the next stage now, we'll be taking off the haunches and the shoulders. We're gonna lay out another sheet so it's not touching the ground and laying on there, letting it air dry for a little while before putting it into cotton sacks into the backpacks. And here we never use water, so Inga's got plenty of paper towels and sponges that we use to absorb some of the congealed blood. But what, we, what he's trying to do is trying to cut most of it out. And then we're separating the, the back legs to cut out the haunches. Mm. We have the neck really, really heavy. Really surprised how heavy is a big, thick neck. <sighs> Pop this. And there we have it. The whole animal butchered. The only thing that's not here, some of the, the trim we've cut off, that's been uh, spoilt with the blood and the, and the shot. The head, which is on the side there, we'll take that back with us. But all the other pieces are here and on the bone. So you've got the ribs, you've got the saddle, it's still got the fillets and the, and the loins. The two shoulders that's been saved, cut off a lot of the excess where the bullet's gone through and the blood. Two haunches and the big neck. So we're going to let these dry out for a, for a little while now. We'll we sit there and just clean ourselves off. And then the next stage we put this in our backpacks, getting ready to head down to the cabin. Kai is learning techniques today that early humans would have been familiar with. He's taking part in a relationship between man and animal that goes back beyond the last ice age. It's a long slog down the mountain, but at the end of it, the promise of a very good feed. And we will be back with Kai in a future episode, Father Christmas's own recipe, how to cook Rudolph. Thank you to shooterking.co.uk for the clothing and Zawa Dot de for the rifles. Now let's go to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube. It is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. This is beautiful. We have waited a long time for a new film by Norwegian filmmaker Jonas Breda, and here it is. Several kinds of fox calling with expert Tor Ola Deli. British sporting agent Athenasporting.com is quail shooting in Romania. A good value short trip in the late summer that fits in nicely before the main game shooting season starts. Viewer Jim sends in this video, which shows that mink have a use other than as quarry for mink hounds and as part of Ivana Trump's coat. This American is using a mink to catch rats in a public park. Trophy Pursuit has its new episode out. The Whitetail Deer Hunting Channel includes Brayton Hurley after a buck called Kmart. Back in Europe and Rose Stalker is after Woodland Red Deer at the end of this year's rut. He already has a stag but since it does not quite fill the freezer he is after a young beast. Ulrich Orskov says he has a new channel coming out in December and here is a bow hunting trailer. He's after goats with a recurve bow. Slade NW shows off one of its favourite duck hunting outings from last season on a small pond in the back waters of a large river covered with ducks and finally it's comedy from youtube that's actually not unfunny one of the big hitting channels dude perfect has a romp through hunting stereotypes see if you can recognize yourself i'm in there that's it for this week if you have a youtube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eight send it in via youtube or email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv if you don't like those how about this which we made Airheads this week follows the fortunes of Jamie Chandler, the air gunner with no hands, as he helps a clay ground rid itself of the rabbits that are nibbling its wires. Meanwhile, Kai is back showing his technique for fast shooting. And in Schools Challenge TV, it's the Oxford Gun Company Open Day, including introductions to semi-auto shotguns by both Meroki and ATA. Click on the links to watch these films. If you haven't done so already, click on the links to subscribe to our YouTube channel or go to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, where you can click to like us on Facebook or follow us on Twitter or pop your email address into our constant contact box and we'll constantly contact you about Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday. And this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye.